The year was 2007 and the Xbox 360 Elite just came out. And why is this significant, you may ask? Well, because the Xbox 360 Elite is the very first home video game console that I ever bought for myself. And up until recently, it was the largest part of my collection. There are larger parts now, but still, I have hundreds of Xbox 360 games, and today we are going to talk about six of them that still hold up pretty darn well today. Hey, what's up everyone, Game Dad here, and we are diving right in with the first game, The Darkness. So, The Darkness is a first-person shooter where you are playing as the main character, Jackie, and what you're finding out is that your mob boss uncle has put a head out on you. But then what you also find out is that you are now possessed by a demon, and that is, you know, the darkness and the darklings that are in this game. It is very graphic, but the story is actually really solid in it. It has really solid gameplay, and before this game came out, I can't recall any game that had mechanics like this one did. It was kind of like being able to control two characters all at once, and you just get to cause mayhem while you are going through the story of this game. It's awesome. And next up is the first game in this franchise that I had ever played. And I've gone back and played the older ones now, but this next game, it was just mind blowing how amazing this was the first time I played it. And that is The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Now with The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, as you can see, it does not look like, you know, AAA games of today but it still holds up graphically pretty darn well for what it is. The gameplay is super smooth. It has a massive story to it and a massive world to explore. And honestly, the game is just awesome. There are so many little side quests you can go on and there's so much to do in the world and so many things to interact with that it keeps you engaged for many, many hours. I remember the first time I ever played this game, I ended up finding some dude in night armor and I was able to kind of spam it where I could hit him and then quickly run away and I kept doing that but I regretted that because later in the game it still remembered that I had randomly killed some dude on the road and I kept getting arrested by people. Now for this next game I have been playing this franchise since the very beginning and honestly this one is probably the best one in the entire franchise until maybe something new comes out but that is Fallout New Vegas. Now, the thing that made Fallout New Vegas so unique and different, and still to this day different from any other Fallout game, is that you didn't just start in a vault and then go out to find the world in post apocalyptic whatever. It's you were already in this world, you were already a part of it, and you're exploring a locale that is so different than any of the other games. The gameplay is super solid. It's got a really cool story to it. And overall, I mean, graphically, I think it still holds up pretty darn well today. It looks great and the game feels great. And you get all the classic tropes that are in a Fallout game, but with kind of like a new lease on life for what the franchise could become. Now, I am an absolute sucker for a gritty crime drama story. So of course, the next one has to be L.A. Noire. Now, in my opinion, L.A. Noire is definitely something that Rockstar should revisit just as a gaming universe, just as a franchise. The game, it plays just like any kind of GTA game or anything like that. It's got that open world feel, like the NPCs and everything that you can talk to are everywhere. Vehicles are everywhere. Things to do are everywhere. But it's, for the first time, from the cops side of things, and you are trying to rank up within the police department and uh, trying to be able to solve all these different cases that are going on in just this grand overarching story. And Rockstar, I mean, they nailed it, man. They just knocked it right out of the park with this game. Now this next game is one where it was the first time I had ever experienced a game where the solo game and multiplayer game were totally different gameplay experiences. And just remember, the cake is a lie. We have Portal 2. Now when Portal 2 first came out, I gotta admit, it's it was the coolest like 3D puzzle platform adventure game that I had ever played. And even to this day, this game is still crazy good. And I mean, just 
the way they did the graphics in this, where you could actually see through the portals as to where you were going, the fact that you could place portals anywhere that you wanted, the multiplayer in it that allowed you to interact with the second player to be able to move objects and get to different areas. This game, still to this day, is absolutely brilliant, and it looks and plays absolutely amazingly. And last up on the list for today is an absolute rock star gem, and that is, of course, Red Dead Redemption. I don't care what anyone says, Red Dead Redemption is every greatest Western movie ever in video game form. It has the love and attention to detail that any Rockstar game usually gets, except it's set in the Wild West, and it's just awesome. Did, I mean, you can go around just being a cowboy and being an outlaw, and it is super fun. There is so much to do. This game is absolutely massive, and just when you think you've beat it, then you get another ending, and then you get another ending, and another ending, and it just keeps going. This game has so much to offer. If you've never played it, you have got to play Red Dead Redemption. Now that is all six games on my list today. Again, a quick recap. We had The Darkness, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Fallout New Vegas, L.A. Noir, Portal 2, and of course the last one we just saw, Red Dead Redemption. All six of these games hold up in their own right and they may not be the most graphically intensive games or anything like that, but what's there is the quality of the game itself. They all have amazing stories and amazing gameplay, and with some of them, by today's standards, they still have pretty amazing graphics. And that's impressive with given how old these games actually are. The Xbox 360 is easily in my top three favorite consoles of all time, not only because it has a massive library, but because it was the first system that I bought for myself. It wasn't any kind of gift or anything like that. It was the thing that I went out with the money that I earned from working to be able to buy a 360 myself. And I was so excited. I waited for that Elite to come out because I wanted the cool sleek black console instead of the white console. And I wanted to be able to get the built-in HDMI and all that stuff. And it was completely worth the wait. The console was and still is amazing. And it's just, it's one of the top consoles, in my opinion, that has ever been released. But yeah, those are six games, in my opinion, that still hold up pretty darn well today for the Xbox 360. Now, if you like this video and you want to check out another video like this, then go ahead and check out this area right here. And as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.